guys, welcome back to Fitness University, where you learn how to get gains for your brains while getting gains. That was cringy. Don't really know what to call this series about how to like stay fit in school and use fitness to be better at school, but you know what I'm talking about. I just made a video last week about how to stay fit in college today. I am giving you some fitness hacks to help you actually be better at school and do better in school so that you can also be more fit and it works together perfectly and you're just, you're gonna have all the gains and all the brains and it's gonna be great. Promise I haven't had any coffee today. My brain's just all over the place, so this is gonna be a fun video. So this video is about fitness hacks and fitness tips to help you do better in school, but the doing better in school will also help you be more fit, because the better you're doing in school and the more efficient you are at studying, the more time you will have to put into your health and fitness. So they kind of go hand in hand. If you've been following my channel for a while, you probably know a little bit how this video is gonna be outlined. For those of you who are new around here, let me tell you a little, little secret about fitness. There are four pillars of health. The first one, is nutrition, the second one is exercise, the next one is sleep, and the last one is stress. They are all equally important, they all impact each other, and if any one of those is severely compromised, it will severely compromise your health and your fitness and your attempt to get abs and get all the gains. So today I'm going to be giving you some pro tips for how to utilize and optimize all four pillars of health in order to do better in school, get better grades, study more efficiently, etc. Before I get into all of my tips and tricks, please do be sure to give this video a big thumbs up to get some good luck for your classes and hit that subscribe button and the notification button so that you can see my future how to do better in school while staying fit videos. And without further ado, let's dive into pillar of health number one, nutrition. My biggest tip is to focus on eating to optimize your brain health and cognitive function. This is pretty straightforward in the sense that a regular healthy diet is really going to help optimize your brain function. You know, you really want to focus on whole unprocessed foods. You want to limit your sugar intake and starchy food slash refined food intake because stuff like that can spike your blood sugar which ends up resulting in a crash and you either need to continue eating more of that to sustain energy which energy is hard enough to sustain itself when you're studying for five hours, let alone when you're feeding your body a bunch of food that's going to spike your blood sugar and your energy levels all over the place and you have to keep either relying on that or not eat it at all. It's a lot easier to just not eat it at all or save it for a special circumstance. Because you know, if you sit down to study and you're like, oh my god, I just had eight hours of class, I'm so tired, I need something to give me energy so that I can study, and you reach for something like a candy bar or chips or something that's going to process in your body really fast and give you a spike of energy, then you're gonna need like eight more candy bars to get you through your entire study session because your energy is just gonna be going like bloop, 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 bloop. You also really want to focus on consuming plenty of healthy fats because those can really influence your cognitive function. So things like extra virgin olive oil, salmon, avocado are great to incorporate into your diet. So that's kind of the basics of how to eat to optimize brain function, but if you really want to go in depth and learn a lot more about this and get some more great tips, I highly recommend the book Genius Foods. I've talked about it I think two or three times on this channel already, but I really just want to emphasize how great of a book it is. It's literally all about how to eat to optimize brain function and also to help prevent neurodegenerative diseases. It's by Max Lugavir. I know you guys are probably already starting to get super bogged down with a lot of homework, but before the semester gets into full swing, I want to give you one more little homework assignment and that is to listen to this book because honestly, I think it could change a lot of people's lives. And the great thing about the book is it's not like a strict diet plan. It's more of a suggestion for what foods to incorporate more of and what foods to sort of limit. So please just listen to this book. I'm giving it to you as a homework assignment. I want y'all to report back to me and show me that you did it. But as always, and unlike your college professors most likely, I'm going to give you the book that you need to do your assignment for free. If you go to audible.com slash marissa or text marissa to 500 500, you can get yourself a free trial of Audible, which is the best audiobook platform in my opinion because they have so many audiobooks. Like literally everything I've ever wanted to listen to has been on there. And then you'll also get one free audiobook which you can use to listen to Genius Foods or any book but you should listen to Genius Foods. And then you should also subscribe to the Genius Life podcast because that's the author's podcast that's also equally as brilliant and amazing and I highly recommend it. The next nutritional point that I wanna make is about using stimulants versus using adaptogens. Stimulants are kinda like cardio 
and adaptogens are like resistance training. Your stimulants should be used sparingly and like a turbo button to like push you if you really need something extra, whereas the adaptogen should be used kind of as your baseline and staple to be taken daily or regularly or, you know, you don't have to take them daily or regularly, but there's something that can be relied on much more as a consistent healthy thing. The main reason for this is that your body can build up a tolerance to stimulants like caffeine, but adaptogens, if taken daily, will still continue to have an effect. So you should reserve caffeine for special occasions like if you're going to have a super late night or if you had a really late night and you only only got like three hours of sleep and now you're up and you have to go to class, then a cup of coffee in the morning is going to give you a great boost of energy to get through your classes. The biggest problem school-wise when you start to have coffee every single day is that it starts to impact your sleep as well. And it's really easy to fall into this pattern, right? Like you have one late night, so the next morning you get up and you're like, okay, I need a cup of coffee. So you have that cup of coffee and then that night you still have a little bit of coffee in your system and so you're struggling to fall asleep so you get a worse night's sleep and so you get up the next day, have a cup of coffee because you're like, oh my god, I'm so tired, I didn't sleep very well. And then the rest of that day, your brain also isn't functioning 100% because you didn't get a good night's sleep. The coffee can make up for it energy-wise, but it's not gonna make up for it brain power-wise. And so maybe it takes you an extra hour or two to get through your homework and so you get even less sleep the next night and then you get up and have coffee again. And then it just keeps happening and it keeps getting worse and worse. What I recommend supplementing with instead for a little boost that won't mess up your sleep and your brain power is adaptogens. So really quick I'm going to go through all of my favorite adaptogens that I think are most relevant to helping you do the best in school as they relate to the four pillars of health. So as far as energy levels go, my two favorites to boost energy and endurance are cordyceps and maca. This is my giant jar of maca. Both of these I really like to mix with my healthy hot chocolate recipe which is basically just nut milk, cacao powder, a little bit of honey or maple syrup plus whatever adaptogens I'm using. And then overall to boost brain health and cognitive function, I highly recommend Lion's Mane. If you're feeling like a little bit of brain fog or just mentally not sharp or on point, Lion's Mane is your best bet. Or take a nap if you're someone that can nap. Napping makes me feel horrible. So I go with lion's mane. But then speaking of sleep, two things that are going to help you get a better sleep and reduce your stress levels are reishi and ashwagandha. Y'all know how I feel about ashwagandha. It's my favorite adaptogen. And reishi is really similar to it. They're both really good at balancing cortisol levels. So if you're like super stressed before bed, taking these before bed is a really great thing to do to help you kind of calm down, unwind. And then once you go to sleep, your sleep itself will end up being better quality. I also highly recommend getting your hands on some chaga because chaga is a really good immune support, so I highly recommend having this around for cold and flu season. So those are my top tips for using nutrition to hack school and your studying. Now we're moving on to exercise, and my number one tip when it comes to, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm really excited about this because it really helped me so much when I was studying for like eight hours a day, is to exercise regularly throughout the day for like three minutes. What I did in school is I had this little whiteboard that I had pinned to my dresser and on it I had a list of like 10 to 15 different exercises and so if I had a time when I knew I was going to be studying or just sitting down at my computer for like 4 to 10 hours, I would set my alarm every half hour and whenever it would go off, I would get up and I would pick three exercises and then I would do the like specified reps because I think I had that written next to it and I would cycle through the three exercises for three minutes. So here's a little picture of what my board looked like right before I graduated. So those are all the exercises that I was doing regularly within like a month before I graduated. So as an example of some exercises that you can put on your board, one of my favorites was a chaturanga push-up with a flip, which I stole from Sarah's day. So you do like the chaturanga thing, and then you do like a flippy thing. I'm demonstrating it right now. I don't really know how to describe it, but you can see what I'm doing. Also, I usually listed a variety of squat lunge complexes where maybe you squat and then just do a forward lunge on each leg or something like that is really good to have up there. I also did a lot of mountain climbers so one of my favorites was doing four mountain climbers and then a push-up and repeating that 15 times. If you work on handstands or headstands that's a great thing to put up there. I had a very tiny room so I was doing handstands like against the door but if you have a little bit more space you can practice like I don't know walking on your hands or whatever you want for like 
a minute. Single leg deadlifts were also one of my favorite movements because they really engage the whole lower body as well as the core. There was usually some kind of burpee on my list, whether or not it was a regular burpee or a burpee with some lunges or something like that. I recommend limiting core focused exercises because those don't really engage a lot of muscles. Your core isn't very big. But one thing that I did like to include was either Russian twists or holding a V up for like 30 seconds. And you will find that doing regular activity, just standing up, getting your heart rate up for like three minutes will help you not only be more productive and more efficient in your studying, but will also help you retain more information in the long run. Another thing that really helped me and I think will help you stay active while getting work done is if you have any reading that you have to do, if you can get it as an audiobook, do that and walk or go to the gym and like listen to whatever it is that you have to read while you're being physically active. So again, obviously I recommend Audible because it's what I've been using forever. If you want to get the free trial of Audible and a free book, go to audible.com slash marissa or text marissa to 500 500. That is M-A-R-I-S-A by the way. I have one S in my name. For those of you in high school, I know you probably have a lot of required reading for your English class. Get those books on Audible and spend the time that you would otherwise sit around reading them at the gym while listening to the audiobooks or even if you don't want to be at the gym if you can't focus as well on the book while you're doing an intense workout then just get up and go for a walk while you listen to it and if you need to take notes take them on your phone and just be active so get your required reading on audible and multitask slash be active while you're consuming the information. And if it's still summery weather, wherever you are, you can, you know, take it on a run with you. You can take your audiobook to the beach with you and just relax at the beach while doing schoolwork without actually actively having to do anything. Audiobooks are great. So moving on to pillar of health number three, sleep. Sleep is so important. I know firsthand how easy it is to not get nearly enough sleep in school. If you don't get enough sleep one night, it becomes so easy to fall into the same cycle that I was talking about with the caffeine. You know, you stay up late one night because you just have to finish that last episode on Netflix. The next day you get up, you can't quite focus as well in class, so your homework takes longer because you didn't learn everything as well as you could, and you also are struggling to like read what's right in front of you for your homework, and so you end up going to bed later the next night, and then you just continue in this cycle of not getting enough sleep, and it continues making your brain function less and less optimally and things just get more and more difficult until you can finally get yourself back on track. So my biggest tip for this is to plan ahead. Put things on your calendar, make sure you know when they're coming up so that you can make sure that you can stay consistent with your sleep leading up to it. So you know, if you have finals coming up, don't wait until the last minute to try to cram everything the last three days before the test because then you'll only be getting like four hours of sleep a night. I've been there, done that. And then you'll get to the test and you won't be able to retain as much information. Like, flat out, your memory will not be as good and you will score lower than you would have if you had made sure to start studying earlier so you could get consistent sleep every night. And I will be making a video in the next few weeks or so specifically about sleep and how to get the best sleep and my top tips for sleep, etc. So if getting enough sleep and getting good quality sleep is something that you really struggle with, definitely make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss that video. And then pillar of health number four is stress. Being one of the biggest nerds on the planet, I tended to let school stress me out a lot more than I needed to. I was the kid who in middle school was stressed about getting good grades because I thought colleges cared. So my tip for this is gonna sound very general and it's gonna have to be very general, but um, my biggest tip is to focus on reducing your stress as much as possible. I talked a lot about stress in the context of health in my how to stay fit after a breakup video. Um, so if you want more of a general overview of stress and health, definitely check that video out. It's not all about breakups, it's mostly about stress and health. But in terms of school, I think it's a very individual thing for how you can reduce your stress. In terms of how it will affect your studying and your grades, if you are chronically stressed, it will mess up your digestion. You won't be able to absorb as many nutrients and so your brain will become nutrient deprived and you won't be able to optimize your brain function. Stress will also impair your recovery after exercise and since exercising regularly helps improve brain function, having the stress 
negatively impact your exercise, it will in turn negatively impact your brain function. And if you're super stressed, your quality of sleep also goes down. And as we just talked about, sleep is very necessary for brain function as well. So overall, lots of stress impacts all of the other pillars of health, which negatively impacts your brain. So things you can consider implementing in order to reduce your stress. Make lists. This was, this literally helped me so much. In high school, my mom was always like, make a list of things that you have to do and like write down the time it's gonna take to do them. And I was like, hey, no, it's stupid. I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I started doing that in college and I was just so much more organized and things went so much more smoothly and I had such a clear idea of what I had to do and it, it helped so much. It's also so satisfying to like check things off your list and be like, yeah, I accomplished that. You get a little like dopamine rush in your head and you wanna keep working and do more so you can cross more stuff off your list and it's, it's great. Lists, amazing. Other things that can help you de-stress are going to the gym. I know personally when I felt super stressed during school, going to the gym was something that really helped me relieve a lot of that stress. Or if that's too stressful on your body when compounded with your other stress, going on a long walk might help. Doing meditation or doing any sort of breath work to help just calm your body down. Just taking 10 minutes three times a day to focus on your breathing and just bring your body to a more like centered, mindful, less stressed state can do wonders to help you stay less stressed throughout the day. And that's it. Those are my top fitness hacks to help you do better in school. I hope that they were helpful. If you have any other hacks, please do leave them down in the comments below so that we can all hack our brains together so we can all do better in life together. I like to think of myself as a little bit of an expert in how to do well in school while staying fit and using fitness to do well in school considering I got in the best shape of my life while getting a degree from MIT. So. I think, I think there are some good takeaways in here for you guys that you can apply to help you do well in school and be fit and be happy and healthy. So please do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it because it really supports me and I really appreciate it. Please share this video with all of your friends and your family and all of your classmates. Subscribe for more videos and hit the notification button so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you very soon. Bye.